Nick. And I'm Peter. And welcome to the 2018 robot walkthrough for our team Snow Problem. Uh, we're going to talk to you about our strategy overview, our drivetrain, uh, our intake, shooter, bumpers, some of the extra little aesthetic touches on our robot, and then we'll let you know where else you, where you can find some more information about the robot. So we're going to start with the drivetrain for this robot. It is a built on an Andymark AM14U3 chassis from this year. Um, it uses 4-inch performance wheels with blue nitrile tread on them, and we use the standard uh, kit chassis gearboxes, tough boxes, um, powered by 4 sims. This year, we decided to focus our strategy on scoring the power cubes in the exchange, switch, and scale at the expense of climbing. We chose this because we recognize the unique challenges posed by intaking and scoring the power cubes and that it might be more valuable for teams to have in-depth prototypes and information about those mechanisms. All right, now we'll take a little look at our intake. So we have three stages that the power cube will go through when it's on its way into the robot. First, it gets taken in by these exterior wheels. As you can see, they extend beyond the bumper just over four inches. The wheels themselves have a resting position of approximately 15 inches apart, and the wheels are four inch Andy Mark compliant wheels, um, 35 short. The wheels themselves are approximately 15 inches apart and are powered by bag motors off of uh, 10 to 1 uh, Versa Planetary gearboxes. Part of our intake is some poly a polycarbonate ramp that the power cube travels up and some polycarbonate guides, both built into the frame and around the intake arms. These help make sure that the power cube is lifted off the ground and into our robot straight. These are also sprung so that there's a little bit of give to them. You can see uh, they can really extend a significant amount. Um, we find this helps with the centering. Uh, and making sure that we're getting a consistent movement into the robot. So our intake arms are particularly unique. Uh, inspired by some of the intakes from 2015's uh, game Recycle Rush, particularly robots such as uh, 1114 Simbot Sideswipe and Robonauts Empire, we wanted to try to spring our intake uh, to some degree. This presented some unique challenges, as in 2015, the frame perimeter rules were such, a, such that you didn't have a frame perimeter. However, in this game, we need to start inside the, the frame perimeter. So in order to get the same action where we have some of that spring uh, on the wheel, we decided to have a pivoting bar. This is actually the 1x1 C-base uh, that was used for the kit of parts chassis for a while. Uh, and fits very nicely around a just plain 1x1 box tube. With this arm, you can see that it moves from its extended position to its retracted position in order to move the intake from inside of the robot to outside of the robot. It's also worth noting that we have a hard stop in here um, in order to limit the travel of the cylinder. We find that it's useful because it's very hard sometimes to find the exact correct pneumatic cylinder. Um, so in order to do this, we actually cut a little dowel um, to the right size in order to make sure that it only retracted enough. Without this hard stop, the intake would actually extend to an unusable position. This can be very useful as a quick solution uh, when you're working on a robot or need to solve an issue. Once it's inside of the robot, um, we have these intake roll, we have these transfer rollers. Now the transfer rollers are, um, consist of two parts some polycord and some small uh, compliant wheels from West Coast Products. These are the 1.625 inch rollers, not the 2 inch ones. Um, we found that this was an effective way of pulling the cube up into the robot. Unfortunately, ours is slightly too far apart, um, just a hair over. So the polycord actually hardly touches the block. It's mostly the compliant wheels that do the work of moving it up into the shooter when it's moving that direction. Those are also powered off of bag motors um, 
off of, I believe, also a 10 to 1 gear ratio. Once the block enters the shooter, um, we have sort of four, some things that happen there. Um, when it's in its default position, this uh, the shooter assembly is about 30 degrees, so it's further down than it is here. Um, so, it has to move back up into position. We have to seat it, so by running our wheels backwards and running these wheels um, backwards as well to sort of center it, center it and seat it on our pneumatic cradle. And then when we're ready to fire, we spin up the wheels and fire into them with a pneumatic cylinder. Um, it's about 13 inches stroke, I believe. Um, the wheels that we use to shoot are also four inch compliant wheels. Um, the, there are four motors that we use to run these. So the two closest are running uh, the 35 Shore green Andy Mark compliant wheels as well, um, off of nine to one, uh, off of Andy Mark Redline motors at a nine to one gear ratio. The exit wheels are running off of uh, VEC 775 Pro Motors um, with the 60 Shore black um, compliant wheels. So we found that this, this much uh, power, the accelerator wheels, really helped us get enough uh, movement power into the cube. So it needed that little bit of extra time inside of it to accelerate up to speed to really give us the height that we needed to shoot in the worst case scenarios with the game. Like I mentioned earlier, this entire assembly rotates down from about 30 degrees to 70 degrees on pneumatic cylinders. The next thing we're going to talk about is our bumpers. Our bumpers, uh, as you can see, are single piece um, with black uh, decorative bumper material from Robopromo. Uh, awesome material, awesome company. We also got these lovely heat press vinyl uh, decals from them. Uh, so those are actually iron-on uh, to our bumper material so they don't quite come off as easily. That about concludes our bumpers. Uh, they're pretty simple. Uh, if, if, you, if we can do them in three days, you guys can probably do them in six weeks. Don't leave them till the last minute, though. <laughs> so next up, we're going to talk about some of the extra bits that we put on our robot. So as you can tell, our robot is not the standard aluminum color. Uh, this is because we actually spent a lot of time powder coating each of our parts and um, really paid attention this year to how it all looks aesthetically. Um, so instead of having just a black drive base and then a blue blob on top, we took the time to actually decide which parts we should have as black and which parts we should have as blue, which are our two primary colors. Um, in addition to that, we're using so much polycarb because we just think it looks cooler. Um, and we also bent it so that way we don't have to have any weird braces in the middle. Um, we use vinyl decals to provide that extra pop of white, um, so they're not painted on or just paper behind it, it's actual stickers. If you look under the robot, you can actually see that there's this nice underglow. Um, this is controlled by the Rev Blinking uh, LED driver, uh, which they graciously gave us to try out and test, which, which you can check out our video about the LEDs in the description below. For that extra aesthetically pleasing uh, feature, we decided to go with bonded pneumatic tubing that is also black and blue which matches our color scheme. This helps just tidy up wire, uh, pneumatic tubing runs inside of our robot and gives it that extra pop of color. In addition to this, uh, in addition to the blinking controller that was given to us by Rev Robotics, we also were given a analog pressure sensor which we use to uh, see how much uh, stored air we have in our system on our smart dashboard, which it is very handy and I'm glad we have it. It's a lot easier than looking in the robot to see gauges. <laughs> yep. As you can see, our robot matches our strategy of pulling the, into the power cubes off of the ground and being able to score them effectively in the exchange, switch, and scale. Make sure to check out the rest of our technical documentation on Chief Delphi and on as other videos on our YouTube channel. Good luck teams and we'll see you at the competition.